Hey everyone, what is good? Welcome back to the channel. This is Silver Hyena. Gotta be careful with the hand wave there because once again, working with watercolors. Don't want to knock the water all over my table, all over my lamps, floor. <sighs> terrible mess to clean up. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Anyways, what is hopefully not terrible are these Ohuhu watercolor paints. Now then, those of you who have been watching my videos for a while know that I can't say enough nice things about the Ohu brush markers, the regular Ohu alcohol-based markers. Basically, I have loved Ohuhu's markers. They are magical, but can they do watercolor paint? And trust me, in between Daniel Smith and Paul Rubens, there's quite a bit of competition. Because I have used a lot of really nice watercolors. I've also used some pretty terrible watercolors too. <laughs> yeah. So. <sighs> There's some tough competition to the... For, yeah, bleh. Words are hard. There is some tough competition to stand up to. Can Ohuhu make the cut? Well, that's what I'm doing this video to find out. So. Let us begin with the grand unboxing now that I had already, I had opened this to show the contents once before, Ugh. but like, see, I haven't even opened it yet. So you know what we do with this thing? Yeet that sucker. Alrighty. And it also came with some brushes. So I think I'm actually just going to try out the brushes that they gave me. You know, for all I know, they could be really nice. Although, I do have some of the Ohuhu water brushes that, depending, I might break those out. So I'll go very carefully. Don't want to cut myself. Now then, the price point for these was very reasonable. I think it was around like Fifteen, sixteen dollars. Like, I'll, I'll put up the actual price in the in the video there, just just in case I'm mistaken. But overall, for twenty four paints, like that, that's a pretty reasonable price. So already, the price point is a big win for Ohuhu. However, the major thing is. Can they perform? So first, I want to take a look at these brushes. It's kind of jumbled in there, so hopefully they'll be all right. <laughs> I was like, I could always use more paint brushes. I can never have too many paint brushes. Oh wow! Look at that. I'm so neat and tidy today. All right. Oh, I actually don't have any with this particular shape, so that actually makes me happy. That kind of... Oh, jeez. I cannot think of the term for it. I should probably look it up. Like, it's not quite a cat's tongue. It, it looks like a hybrid between your standard round and a flat. And this one has a bit of an angle to it. And this one looks like a standard round. Do they? Okay. So this one is a size 8. Do they actually have two? But it doesn't say specifically, like, you know, if it's flat. 10. Oh, artist brush. So you get six brushes. This one is a size 6, although ugh, the tip there is a little bit bent. But hopefully you can work that out. So and then a size 4. Okay, so we've got plenty to work with there. See if those are any good. Yeah, here are my noisy chair. Alrighty, so we've got blues, reds, oranges, yellow, white. It looks like a good turn. Like I said, words are hard. You've got a good mix of some neutrals, and some brights. It's it's a nice basic set overall. So 
So let's take a look at the tube itself. Lamp black, nice standard tube, and it's got the little spike in the lid there that you gotta do this number. Now then, when you get paint like this in the tubes, make sure to get some of these. I just got a couple of the standard empty watercolor palettes from Hobby Lobby. These things are like four bucks each. So not too expensive at all. And I figure I've got two of these because I wanted one for one half and one for the other half and have plenty of mixing space between them. It's just a question of if I have enough space on my table to handle all of these at once. I have no idea. But somehow or another I am going to make it work. I, I usually do. So there's that. I'm gonna try to put these in the order that they come in just because I'm that way. Ah. So, with these kinds of tubes, you just unscrew the cap and you pierce. Get a little blob there, and then what I do just like that. Get a bit of paint on your hand. Oh wow. Oh, even on my finger it seems to have some pretty good pigment. So, um, I'm just going to do this uh, 23 more times off camera, and uh, I'll talk to you when I'm done with that, so... Alright, so here's all the colors out on the palettes, and overall they look really good, except I am a little bit concerned about just the plain old orange. It looks like it's separated a bit in there, but hopefully after some water is spritzed in there it'll bring it right back to life. At this point, I'm not really so sure, but it is time to commence the swatching. And I am glad I picked a small watercolor sketchbook for this because eh, I am running out of room. Of course, that's kind of a usual thing on this channel, but as I said earlier, I will make do. Alrighty, so first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do some spritzing of the palettes. Alrighty, palettes are spritzed. And if I need to, of course, I've always got my little eyedroppers. I figure I'll use this, this one. I'm just gonna swatch them. Oh, I need to. I need to swap the order of these. There we go. I'm gonna swatch them in the order that they were in the in the pack. Here goes. Oh, that is actually really pretty. Nice transparency. Hmm. Well, so far not half bad. Okay, so um, I've only got 23 more of these to go, so I am gonna speed things up a bit. What'll only take a few minutes for you is probably gonna be at least um, 20 minutes to half an hour for me, so enjoy!
Alrighty, so here are the Ohuhu watercolors, nice and dry, and they've got a little bit of a interesting texture, not quite chalk, but yeah, there, there's definitely a bit of a texture to them, but it, it, it's not bad. It's not bad, I will say that. Um, the other thing that is very important to test out, these, I'm actually getting back to you guys a few days later. Like, that's the thing. Sometimes my videos take multiple days to record, just because life. Um, okay, oh, that was the uh, flesh-toned. I was like, wow, that orange really went all wonky. But, no, 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 that was the flesh-toned one. Ugh, silly me, silly me, silly me. But, um, one of the tests I had conducted earlier was to make sure that these paints re-wet, I could not resist the urge and I did this one without having the camera rolling like I should have been leaving for work in five minutes but what did I do I had to test out the darn paints however since we're rolling this time I'm gonna fill that up a bit I'm gonna show you guys that this paint does indeed re-wet and this is one of my biggest criterias, especially for the tube watercolors, because the regular pan, like the watercolor paints, yeah, I mean, they're they're kind of supposed to re-wet. But some brands of paint, um, from what I've heard, <coughs> is a, <coughs> excuse me, their watercolor tubes do not re-wet. At least that's what I've heard. For all I know, they have changed their formula. However, oh hoo hoo, as you can see, they do re wet. However, as you'll note, the color is a lot more transparent than when you first squeeze it out of the tube. So there is that to take into consideration. However, I could see this being both. It has its ups and downs, but the point is, they do re-wet, which is a huge relief to me. So that, good on you, oh hoo hoo. You guys did good. So I'm just going to try out another one of these colors here. I am just a sucker for these blues. Yeah, I mean, like, look at that. I mean, like, it's, it's so much lighter, but... Like, you know, you can always layer. Like, that's the thing about painting. You add those layers, you build it up. And here's one that I did my own little mix. Let's see how. There we go. Looks fine to me. So the colors look great out of the tube, they re-wet, they blend beautifully. So far I'm liking this, and a great price point all things considered, especially if you're just getting into watercolors and you don't want to spend a bloody fortune on the uber fancy stuff like Daniel Smith before you know if you're really going to be into it or not. So far... These Ohuhus look like they're going to be a great starting point. Like, you know, not like painfully cheap like Crazy Art or some of those other ones that are three steps shy of useless. But you get enough color, enough vibrancy, enough to work with, and it's not going to break the bank. So, always a plus. Anyways, it is time to do an actual painting with these babies. So, while I think of something to draw, just give me a minute.
Okay, so swatching is one thing, but once I actually begin using these paints, I can't help but wonder how these are not more popular. I mean, the price point is one thing. Roughly $16 for 24 colors. 24 colors that are easy to blend on paper or in your palette. These paints go down quite smoothly. I don't recall a moment ever getting frustrated with them. Perhaps just needing two of my foldy palettes instead of one. That's probably like the thing that it irked me the most. The only major drawback is that I haven't been able to find anything about light fastness for these paints. And given how inexpensive they are when compared to other watercolors, I think it's safe to assume uh, that these puppies aren't very light fast at all. So keep any finished pieces out of direct sunlight. Not that I'm assuming that you just place your precious artwork in the sun because reasons. So yeah, if I had to find one drawback, it would be a lack of information on light fastness. But the performance for the price? Color me impressed. Easy to mix, easy to use, what's not to love? Above all else, I think these paints would be fantastic for beginners. Anyone who's been wanting to get into watercolors but feels intimidated by the high cost of the fancier brands of watercolors out there. Honestly, Ohuhu watercolors are a wonderful starting point. They work the way watercolors are supposed to work, so what's not to like? Overall, I'd recommend these paints, just like I'd happily recommend Ohuhu markers. I'd love to try out more products from Ohuhu. Seriously, I love this brand so much. Fantastic art supplies at, it, at, at such a reasonable price, plus the name is fun to say. So if you find yourself considering picking up these paints, stop considering and try them out for yourself. Alrighty, so final thoughts on these paints. Well, it makes the paper bend upwards, but that's just something watercolor does, so you better get used to it if you're gonna use this medium. Anyways, overall what I thought of these paints, I enjoyed using them. They blend well, they've got nice bright colors. Uh, overall, I, I enjoyed the experience. I, I would definitely say that while they're not as good as, say, the Paul Rubens or the Daniel Smith, they are definitely worth it. Like if you just want to get into watercolors, but you don't really want to spend a fortune, these Ohuhu watercolors could just be the way to go. Definitely more on the student grade end of things, but very user friendly. If I had to give them a numerical rating, I would definitely say that a 7 out of 10 would be more than fair. Not the greatest in the universe, but they're good enough. Anyways, let me know what you think of these paints down in the comments. Are you just shopping around? Have you used them before? What are your thoughts? I want to know. Anyways, with that being said, Remember, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you didn't enjoy this video, well, um, hit that like button anyway. Because, well, just because. And while you're at it, be sure to check out my Instagram, at SilverHyenaArt. That's where I post some sneak peeks at videos I'm currently working on and a whole lot more. Anyways, this is Silver Hyena signing off. Stay creative, everybody. Bye! And don't knock over your water cups while you're waving goodbye.